Hello, can you multiply 769 times 9 and do it in your head? Keep watching to find out how. In this lesson, we're going to learn a really important central skill, and that is how to multiply any three-digit number times a one-digit number. You know, it seems very difficult to do, and in fact, it is difficult to do if you don't know the right way to attack it. Now, in a prior lesson, a few lessons ago, we learned how to multiply two-digit numbers times one-digit numbers. And this is really the exact same technique, uh, just expanded a little bit. So we're building our mental math skills up step by step. And so hopefully you reach this far in the course. You've gotten a little bit of mental acuity. You're getting a little more comfortable with numbers. And you're starting to see the patterns that we're using to solve these problems. Um, I will say that this is not really a trick. It's not like a, a one-off of a special kind of number. You can use it for any three-digit times one-digit multiplication, which happens all the time. All right, so what we're going to do is start, start with an easier problem like this and build our way up. First thing you need to realize is that this number, 124, is really, if you think about it, uh, 100 plus 20 plus 4. That is what the number 124 really means. It's just that we don't think about it split up like this because we're used to seeing the numbers like this. But when we're doing our multiplication, it's going to be very, very important for you to see the number for what it really is. 100 plus 20 plus 4. So here in the first few problems, I'm going to write it out for you to remind you. But as we get going with it, I want you to look at this digit and don't see it as a digit of 1. See it as a placeholder for 100 because of its location in the number. Don't look at this as a 2. It represents 20. And of course, the last digit just represents what it is. That's going to be crucial. If you can do that, you're already halfway to doing all of this stuff in your head. All right, now in order to pull off this, this, uh, this uh, mental math here, really what you need to do is do the multiplication. So what you're doing here, instead of working right to left and, and carrying and adding and doing all the things that we do when we learn how to do this by paper, Always start from the left. There's a lot of advantages to that. We'll talk about them in a minute, but let's just get through the first example. Three times, not times one, three times 100, that's what this is, is 300. All right? Three times one, 100, is actually 300. So there's your first answer. And what you need to do is add to that three times well, yeah, it's a 2 here, but we're really not thinking of it as a 2. We're thinking of it as a 20. Three times 20. Uh, is 60 because 3 times 2 is 6. Of course, there, you just stick a 0 on because of its location here. So 3 times 20 gives me 60. All right. And finally, 3 times 4 gives me 12. You just use the regular rolled number here. So this guy, I want to draw a little line here to differentiate what I'm talking about. These numbers represent just what the number is. Right here, I'm writing out the multiplication that in a moment you're going to be able to be doing, your, doing in your head. So when you add 300 plus 60, I think we all agree we're going to get 360. And we still need to add the 12, right? Because that's still sitting here. 360 adding the 12 using our mental math skills from before. Uh, it's going to go 360, 370 because of this implied 10 here, 372. So the answer is 372. And that's the final answer. Now, I want to say here that I'm, I'm assuming that you've looked at the mental addition techniques. I'm assuming you've practiced that a little bit. You can add this in any way you're comfortable with, but it's easier to start with 360, count up by 10 because of this 1, and then add the 2. So 360, 370, 372, and that's the answer. Okay, for our next problem, we're going to work up in complexity a little bit each time. Uh, when we look at this number, I don't want you to see 223. I want you to see a placeholder for 200, a placeholder for 20, and then, of course, this is the 3. So this number really can be written as 200 plus 20 plus 3. And doing this mentally by just looking at the number is really going to make it so much easier. All right? So the next thing we want to do is start multiplying. 4 times 2, but it's really not 2, it's 200. 4 times 200 is 800. You multiply the numbers and you tack on two zeros because of its location. So you're going to get 800 here. And we need to add to that 4 times 20 because this is a placeholder for 20. 4 times 2 gives you 8. Tack on a 0 gives you uh, 80. So another way to think about it is 
Uh, 4 times 20 gives me 80, or you can just multiply the numbers. 4 times 2 gives me 8, tack on a 0 because of its location. I like to think of it as 4 times 20 because that's the real value of this digit here. Okay, and then finally, 3 times 4 gives us again 12. So what we need to do is mentally add this, but you see it's not that difficult to add this because 800 plus 80 is just 880, and we still need to add our 12. So we start at 880 and we count up 880, 890, 892. So the final answer is 892. Now this is the basic technique. Everything that we're going to do from here on out is going to be uh, no different, no more complex. Really, the only thing is that as we get to higher and higher numbers, we'll have to do a, the, the addition really will be a little bit more challenging. But that's what we do. We start small and we build up. And even if you never get to where you're comfortable doing the high numbers, even being able to multiply 223 times 4 is a pretty impressive feat uh, if you need to handle that. Uh, okay, so just go ahead and practice it. Keep up with it. Uh, and you'll get better with each and every example. Okay, our next problem is 229 times 5. Notice we're starting to multiply by larger and larger numbers. But don't forget, this number is really 200 plus 20 plus 9. And we're going to do everything else exactly the same uh, as before. So 5 times 200, uh, think about it for a second, is going to give you 1,000. Right? And if that's kind of difficult for you, just think 5 times 2 is 10, but you have to tack on two zeros because of its location. That gives you 1,000. And you're going to add to that 5 times 20 is going to give you 100. And again, if that's difficult, think 5 times 2 is 10, tack on a 0 because of its location, giving 100. Finally, 9 times 5 is 45. And doing this in your head is the hardest part of it, but really the addition here is not that bad. 1,000 plus 100 is 1100 0, 0, 1, We still need to add our 45. So the final answer is going to be 1145. Right? Not too difficult. 1145. All right, our next problem is 342 times 6. So this will be the last problem where I'm going to write out what the number is equal to because after this, uh, I want you to get in the habit of being able to look at this number and see 340 and 2. And then as you do that and get practice with it, you, don't, you won't have to go through this mental gymnastics of, of breaking the number out and trying to write it down visually. You'll just be getting good at it. For this one, let's go ahead and do it the same way. 300 times 6. If that confuses you, think 3 times 6 gives you 18. Tack on two zeros, you, you should get 1800. So let's go ahead and write 1800 right here. And we need to add to that 6 times 40. 6 times 40. Think 6 times 4 is 24, but we have to tack a 0 on. So it's 240 that we really need to add here. Finally, 2 times 6 gives us 12. All right. So for the final result, 1800 plus 240. Now here you have to do a little bit of mental math because you're going to roll over a little bit. If you think about it, 1800, right? So starting here, 1800, 1900, 2000, 2040. So 2040 plus the 12. So let's tackle this last one. 2040, 2050, 2052. 2052. The counting up method of addition is extremely powerful. Once you get the hang of it, going right to left won't even make sense to you anymore unless you have to do something on paper. So let's review it one more time. Uh, 3 times 6 is 1800. We add to 240 by, by doing our mental addition techniques, by counting up. So 1800, so 1900, 2000, 2040, and then we get to 2040, 2050, 2052. Okay, our next problem is 131 times 4. Now, I went down slightly in the complexity. This is a slightly smaller number because now I'm not going to write out that this is 100 plus 30 plus 1. So from here on out, when you look at this number, I want you to do the multiplication knowing the value of these placeholders without mentally trying to, to, to jot it down in your head like that. It's going to be faster, so let's go ahead and work on it. And also, I'm going to stop writing out the addition. I'm going to show you how I think about it and hopefully you can adopt it uh, in your way of thinking because it will be faster. So let's start out. 4 times 100 gives you 400. So in your head, think 400. 
Now, if you, even if you just stop at that point and don't even go any farther, you've got a pretty decent estimate of the magnitude of this answer. It's not correct, but at least it gives you an order of magnitude. So 400. Next, we have 4 times 30, which is going to give you 120. And you need to add that to it. So what you really should be thinking is 400 plus 120. But instead of saying to yourself 400 plus 120, just do the addition in your head and, and can keep the next result as your next intermediate answer. So 400, 500, 520. So the next number I'm going to hold in my head is 520. Now in order to get there, I added 120 to this answer. Now the final thing is I've got to tack on 4. So I'm going to add it to here mentally, 524. This may seem difficult at first for everybody here because you're not used to doing it. But just like riding a bike, it was difficult at first. If you get used to jockeying these numbers in your head, you'll be able to handle it. The trick is to not clutter your mind by saying things like 400 plus 120 equals this. If you say those words in your head, you're going to end up forgetting one of these numbers and then you're not going to be able to handle it. So when you do it, this is exactly what I want you to think whenever you do this mental multiplication like this. This is what I want you to think. Mentally or, or visually, kind of circle something in the air. 400, 520, 524. You're going to need to end up multiplying these things sort of mentally without saying it, and then you kind of say to yourself the intermediate answers. 400, 520, 524. Now, if it's absolutely impossible for you to do it this way, then you can certainly in your head say things like this plus this, whatever is easier for you. But I'm trying to tell you that if you kind of get used to it this way, it will make it easier. All right, our next problem is 152 times 3. Let's pick up the pace just a little bit and let's see how far and fast we can go. 3 times 100. First intermediate answer, 300. This guy is going to give me 150. 5 times 3 is 100, or 50 times 3 is 150. So 300, 450. That's my next answer because I've added 150 to it. 450. Lastly, 6. 3 times 2 is 6. So 400. 56. So you see how much easier that is. That's the final answer. You think to yourself, 300, 450, 456. And that's the final answer. All right, our next problem, moving up in the complexity tree here, 351 times 6. So let's try our hand at it. 300 times 6 is going to give me 1,800, right? Because 3 times 6 is 18, plus the two zeros gives me 1,800, okay? This guy... The 50 times 6 is going to give me 300. So I'm thinking to myself, 1,800, I've got to add the 300. So I'm thinking 2,100. So I'm literally thinking 1,800, 2,100. All right? And finally, this guy multiplying gives me 6. So I've got 2,106, 2,106. Now pat yourself on the back. This is a pretty complicated problem, 351 times 6. Uh, most people probably wouldn't try to do it in their head, but you're able to handle it. Okay, the next problem is 472 times 7. We're going to do it exactly the same way. Uh, 7 times 4 is 28, so 2800 is our first intermediate answer. And even if you just stop there, it gives you a pretty decent order of magnitude of how big this number is going to be. Next, this guy is going to give me 49, but with 0 is going to give me 490. So I need to add 490 to this. So when you think about it, if I add 400 to it, I'm going to get 3,200. But I've got a 90 because it's 490. So it's going to be 3,290, right? Because I've added, just to show you here, I've added 490 here, all right? And finally, my final thing is this guy is going to give me 14. 2 times 7 is 14. So adding this, 3290 plus 14, when I add the 10 here, it's going to give me 3300, and then 04, because I've added 14, 3304. Now this is getting up a little bit in the complexity. I'm trying to give you examples to show you that as you get to larger numbers, multiply by larger numbers, you have to do a little bit more in the, in the mental jockeying department, because doing some of this addition with, with the rollover, so to speak, gets a little bit more difficult. But taking it from the top. 7 times 400, 2,800. This guy gives us 490. So adding 490 is going to give us 
3,200 for the 400, 3,290. And then adding this, going from 3,290 gives us 3,300, 3,304. And that's the final answer. All right, the next problem is 407 times 8. And I'll tell you right now, anytime you have a zero in any, anywhere in any one of these problems, it's going to make it so much easier. And you'll see why here in a second. Taking it from the top, 8 times 400. 8 times 4 is 32. Uh, so it's going to be 3,200. All right. Next, we'll multiply this. Well, this is 8 times 0, and it's a placeholder with a, bunch, with a 0 here, but it's 0 as its value, so really you're adding nothing to it. So you're thinking to yourself, 3,200. When you add this guy in, you still have 3,200, so you don't really have to add anything to it. Lastly, uh, 8 times 7 is 56, so the answer is going to be 32, and you add the 56, giving you 3,256, 3,000. Uh, 256 and you see because of the zero here it, it eliminates almost one-third of the entire mental gymnastics needed to get to the answer so 407 times 8 giving you 3256 pretty impressive problem to do in your head not too hard when you get some practice with it okay our next problem is probably the highest numbers that we're going to do in this lesson because this is sort of representative of how how complicated it can get for you uh, but we're going to do it the same way 9 times 7 is 63, but with the placeholders, we have 6,300. All right, so keep that in your head, and that's a pretty good first order of, of what the final answer is going to be. Next, 9 times uh, 6 is 54, but you got to add the 0, so it's 540. So I need to add 540. So I think to myself, 6,300, adding the 500 is going to give me 6,800, and then the 40 because I'm adding 540 here because of the 54 with the 0, 540. So I'm adding 540. So think to yourself, 6,300, 6,800, 6,840. And then finally, for our final part here, 6,840, I need to add 81 because 9 times 9 is 81. So the easiest way to do that is think to yourself, okay, 6,840, um, if I need to, to add 81 to it, if I think about it, if I add 60 more to this number, I'm going to get to 6,900. So I'm going to get 69, but I only added 60 to do that. I still need 21 more to give me 81. So 69, 21. All right, so you can do this as many different ways and as easy as is, is best for you, but going from here to here, I had to add 81. So 6840, uh, adding the 80, if you want to think of it that way, is going to give me 6920, and then adding the 1 is 6921, and that's the final answer. So this is about as complicated as it gets, because when you start multiplying the middle numbers here, you're rolling over, you're having to change digits a little bit, because you're rolling over, going from one to the next, but really is the exact same process for all of these problems. Okay, now here's a surprise for you. I didn't tell you this at the beginning, but all of this three-digit multiplication can be directly applied to money, and that's why it's really important and really useful. Maybe you're in the grocery store. Maybe a half gallon of milk costs $2.18, and maybe you want to buy four of them. And most people would give up on trying to multiply this to get an exact answer, but we can do it very easily. The trick is completely ignore the decimal point. Just put your finger over it and pretend it's not even there. So I'll cover it up for you right there. It's not even there. So let's go ahead and do the problem as if the decimal weren't was not even there. So this would be 4 times 200, right, giving us 800, just as we've been doing before. All right. Next, 4 times this 10 here because of the placeholder here. Remember, remember this decimal doesn't exist. Pretend it's not there. 4 times 10 gives us 40. Adding it to here is 840. So I'm thinking to myself, 800. 840. Now the final thing is 8 times 4 is 32, so I need to add 32 to this. So going from here, uh, 840, uh, 870, 872, 872, and I was adding 32. So this is 872, and if the decimal were not there, the answer would be 872. Now to get the final answer, all you have to do is stick a decimal right there because you have to have two placeholders after for your dollars and your cents and that's it so you do it just like uh, you would completely ignore the decimal and then you stick it there and that's actually a super valuable trick for you to know anytime you're dealing with money you can almost always do that ignore the decimal do the problem put the decimal back in okay this is going to be our final problem it's just another example of showing you how you can deal with money very easily maybe you're in the grocery store maybe a bag of chips costs a dollar and seventy six cents maybe you have six children you want to see if you have enough cash in your wallet to handle that so completely ignore the decimal here 
So what we do is 6 times 100 is going to give me 600. That's my first intermediate answer, right? Now, 7 times 6 is 42, but we have to add the 0 because of the placeholder. So it's plus 420, plus 420. So if I add 420, I'm going to get 1020 because 400, adding 400 to this is going to give me 1000, plus the 20 is going to give me 1020 because don't forget I'm adding 420 because 7 times 6 is 42. So adding this gives me 1000 plus the 20. Final thing, 6 times 6 is 36. So adding 36 to this, right, 1056 because 1020 or 1020, then adding the 30 is 1050, adding the 6, 1056, and I added, and I added 36 here. So 1000. 20, 1050, 1056. When I have all of my digits, all I do is stick a decimal point two places away from the final guy, stick a dollar sign on front, and that's your final answer. And I'll be the first to admit to you, when, when we see decimal points, me included, sometimes it shuts your brain down a little bit. You, you look at it and you think, oh, that's difficult. It's got a decimal point in there. How am I going to handle that? Well, the math really doesn't care if there's a decimal place there or not. You can do the math without the decimal and then stick your decimal in the final answer. And that's almost always going to be easier. So if you have six children trying to buy six bags of chips, it's going to cost you $10.56, and that's how much you need. I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, these things are really easy to practice. Just grab a calculator, uh, write a few problems down, try to mentally do it. Start small with the three-digit numbers that are smaller and multiplying by smaller numbers. Get your practice up. Get your skill level up. Gradually work up. It's something that's very practical that you can use almost every day. And, uh, you know, you can really, uh, you know, at the gas pump, you know how much uh, gas is usually $2.50 or so. You could easily multiply uh, by, you know, nine gallons or however many gallons you needed to try to see how much money that would cost. And you'll find yourself, as you get good at this, you'll find yourself practicing this without even realizing it. And that's only going to make you better. So have fun with it and get good at it and uh, keep it in your back pocket and it'll be very, very useful for you to master. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.